How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student, and today we're going to be covering the risks of increased blood clots after starting estrogen replacement therapy, specifically for transgender women and trans feminine individuals. This is a common question I get asked pretty frequently as someone who gives talks about trans health, but also a lot of my friends are concerned about this because they hear in the news, they hear in other research studies, that cisgender women who take oral contraceptive pills with estrogen in it increases your risk for blood clots. But most people who read that title and read that headline don't really dive deep into that research. Um, luckily, even for cisgender women who are taking some form of estrogen contraceptive combined pill, the risks are significantly lower than what it was from years ago because nowadays we, ju we, ju we don't just rely on estrogen to help with birth control needs, but that also applies to the care of trans feminine individuals and transgender women. So I'm a transgender man and the primary hormone that I take is testosterone and oftentimes that's the only hormone I need for the changes that I want when it comes to masculinizing myself. But for trans feminine individuals and transgender women, Estrogen is not the only hormone that you may need to get desired results. In fact, most transgender women and trans feminine people that I know are not on long-term estrogen, which is a good thing because it lowers your risk of blood clots. And there's other drugs out there that act in different mechanisms of the body that increases someone's ability to feminize themselves without relying on estrogen. But even if you were taking estrogen for a number of years, the risks are pretty minimal. In a 2021 meta-analysis that was released about a few months ago, I'll link to all these studies I talk about down below, this meta-analysis looked at 18 different studies that had over 11,000 participants who had taken some form of estrogen replacement therapy as a transgender person, and they found the risks to be almost non-existent if you're under the age of 30 7.5 and if you've been taking estrogen for less than five years they found the risk to be almost zero percent compared to birth control pills combination birth control pills that the risks of getting a blood clot when you're on it for about 10 years is 0.3 to one percent now the study did see that with increased age and increased length of estrogen use, that number went up a little higher. It can go up to as high as a 3% risk. However, I will say there are some factors that can contribute to increased blood clots in older populations just because of the fact that we get older and we people just naturally become more prone to having other risk factors. It's not just taking estrogen that might be leading to this higher risk. It could be things like high blood pressure. It could be things like heart disease. It could be a lot of other factors such as high cholesterol that can lead to that increased risk. And I wanna emphasize that the risk is so low that the University of San Francisco guidelines for transgender care doesn't even recommend that a trans woman or trans feminine person stop smoking to reduce their risks of blood clots. Smoking is a really, really huge determinant of increased risk of blood clots, but the risk of taking estrogen replacement therapy is so low for a blood clot that if someone is smoking and comes into the office and wants to start estrogen, the doctor should not keep that patient from starting their estrogen replacement therapy because the risk is so low, we have to look at it through a harm reduction lens. So a person can smoke and take estrogen without a significant risk of them developing a blood clot. However, I will say, Kavit, it's always a good idea to stop smoking. Smoking causes so many issues in your body, not just increased risk of blood clots, it increases your risk for osteoporosis, it increases your risk for cancers, not just lung cancer, but bladder cancer as well. But I'll get off my little um, soapbox about preventative medicine and focus on this video at hand. And like I've said in the beginning of this video, most people are not on estrogen for their lifetime. Estrogen luckily is not the only drug that you can take for feminization. You can take aromatase inhibitors. I know a lot of people, instead of taking estrogen, they take something called spironolactone, which is a 
drug that lowers the amount of natural masculinizing hormones in your body and spironolactone can also um, stimulate breast development amazing so there are so many other drugs that you can take that doesn't rely on estrogen but gives you the same benefits of feminization that you would like to have and also if you've gotten bottom surgery at some point in your life, you probably don't even need to rely on estrogen anymore or maybe a very, very minute amount of estrogen. I have a couple of friends who after bottom surgery completely got off hormones and they've been able to uh, live their life hormone-less. I actually have quite a bit of friends who after getting bottom surgery no longer needed to take on any form of oral estrogen pill or any form of injectable estrogen they've been able to live their life without using any form of estrogen and it hasn't caused any um, uncomfortable side effects and it hasn't reversed any changes that they don't want to lose anyways that's it for this video on the risks of increased blood clots if you start estrogen replacement therapy in summary very negligible you should not be scared unless you have some some sort of predetermined blood clotting disorder then you will have to have a discussion with your primary care provider about harm reduction and how to lower your risk while also getting the feminization desires that you want but for the average population you do not need to worry about increased risks of blood clots please go to your provider there's nothing you should be afraid of have that discussion with your provider about starting estrogen replacement therapy if you do want that in your life as someone who is thinking about medically transitioning and i hope you got something out of this video i hope you learned something from this video i hope you will share this information with someone that may benefit from this knowledge that i share out into the world and i'll see you in the next video please follow me on instagram and twitter to keep up with my daily shenanigans and my advocacy work and i'll see you in the next video this is ben